Gracias a la vida and gracias to Melina. I gotta tell you, I love, love that song. Um, and I, I, I mean, I'm in the car and I'm like, gracias a la vida. And the next thing I hear is Luke is going, ugh, <laughs> my son. Because <laughs> that's how much I love that song. Um, I play it way too much for him. Um, but anyways, well, thank you for that again, Melina and our music ministry. And um, there's a pastor who uh, told his congregation uh, that he served uh, one Sunday. He's like, I want you all to be prepared for my Sunday lesson next week. So I'm asking all of you to please read chapter 17 in the Gospel of Mark. So the week goes by, and then, you know, people show up, and he's there, and he's like, all right, raise your hand if you did the homework and read the 17th chapter of the Gospel of Mark. And sure enough, there were people, everyone lifted up their hands and everything. He's like, great, then you're ready for my talk today. There is no chapter 17. It only goes up to 16, and I'll be speaking about the evil of lying. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so um, I, I shared this, uh, partly I shared this because, you know, uh, there are sometimes talks that might be, you know, focus on one individual group or individuals, and you might think that'd be the case because I'm going to speak about uh, a little bit of my heritage, right, my Hispanic and Latin heritage and the story of that, um, and we've been uplifting, or I'll be uplifting some of those stories also, and it's for all of us because if I've come to recognize something is that while things may look a little different from one life and one story to another, at the end of the day, we are all on the same journey, right? We're all on the same path to greater freedom, to greater understanding, to recognizing who and what we are. And I believe that all of us can benefit from leaning on uh, the stories, especially the Hispanic or the um, Latin stories of immigration, for example, to the United States that I'm going to share with you about uh, shortly. Um, but if you um, do me the honors, I know that, you know, sometimes when I ask you to affirm something, you're like, I mean, I, I would imagine that it goes through your mind. It's like, well, hold on. Let me hear it first before I affirm with you. So if you feel comfortable, um, you can speak it out loud or just affirm it to yourself. But I want to invite you into these affirmations. I honor my roots. I embrace my divine freedom. I create a future aligned with my highest vision. That's what I want to talk to you about today. How I and we can really honor our roots, whatever those roots may be, and through that recognize that there is a freedom that is waiting for us to really take hold of and really live into and really use so that we can move into uh, the path that is before us, the journey that we have been on, the next step within our journey to welcome in that highest vision of who we are, that highest understanding of how we are meant to be in the world, which again, I remind you, for me at least, and I really hope that for you, it's about thriving. It's about really living into your truth and really allowing yourself to feel that that in God and with God, we can do it all. That there is power that is so great uh, within us, in our oneness with God, that we can move through whatever challenges and difficulties and whatever the path may have for us. And that when we honor our roots, we can really glean from it some of the teachings. And not only does that support us in creating a way of us moving through our own path, but in that we can uplift others so that they can live into their path. You know, I, I think, and I've shared, um, one of our unity ministers that I'm friends with, her great aunt is Dolores Huerta, the wonderful social justice activist who still in her 90s is active and working towards the good of people. And uh, Dolores Huerta was uh, from Mexican heritage and uh, was born in New Mexico. And as a teacher, was teaching a lot of immigrant children. And she started noticing and realizing that, wait a minute, 
I see my heritage. I see my culture in these families and in these children. I see some of my struggles in the struggles that these families are living through. And she just saw herself in them and in their history and their culture, and it inspired her to say yes to the path that was before her. And that path led her to really, be, she began the movement towards greater freedom for farm workers here in the United States with uh, Cesar Chavez. There's also the story of that immigrant, uh, or well, heritage uh, of Lin-Manuel Miranda, who's Puerto Rican descent, grew up in the Bronx, loved, loved seeing the stories and the sharing and the community that was a part of his culture and his growing up. And he put it into song, he put it into lyrics, and that's how we got that amazing musical, In the Heights. And through that, he also was able to recognize, wait a minute, I can uplift the stories of all marginalized communities, and I can be a voice to lift those stories up and make those paths a little bit more visible, a little bit more easy for those individuals. And I don't know about you, but I remember so distinctly when he got his second Tony Award um, for, or for his second uh, musical, um, Hamilton. It was just a few days after the shooting at Pulse Nightclub, and he said and spoke those beautiful lines that were so simple and yet so uplifting. Love is love is love is love is love is love. And so with these individuals, you see how they bring their heritage to give color to their own path. And as they lean on their culture, they lean on the stories of their upbringing and of their families, they're able to recognize that we're all in this together, that there is something beautiful being birthed, and that the path ahead is one that uplifts him and those around them. And so for me, I really um, sit with that. And I have to tell you, some of you know a little bit of my story, or some of you have actually maybe told the whole thing, and you're like, all right, we got it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's interesting for me to be celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month because uh, there was a time in my life when I not only did not celebrate it, but I kind of hid some of that story. Some of you know that my parents immigrated to the United States with my sister and I to seek greater freedom, financial freedom, and societal freedom. Uh, and we came as undocumented immigrants, and we were undocumented for most of, my, actually all of my youth. And, you know, um, because of that and this fear I had of being found out, I remember one time uh, I was in, um, uh, it was PE, and I got in trouble with the PE teacher. I must have been like 10 years old or something. And I distinctly remember in my 10-year-old mind having the thought, oh God, my parents got called into the office they may find out that we're undocumented and my whole family may be uh, deported as a result of me getting in trouble here in PE class. That did a number on perfectionism with me, right, uh, in my life. But it was that kind of thing where while there were some parts of my culture and my heritage that I really sort of welcomed and lived into, there were other aspects that I really shied away from and I really didn't see as a positive, right? Um, but then I did some of that healing work and I started to realize just how much I could lean on the stories of my parents, my dad, who before he immigrated here uh, had almost finished medical school, right? And gotten a medical degree. Uh, but when he moved here and he did good work, right? Like it's, it's, it's all good work. Uh, he was putting up drywall in a construction company and on the weekends sometimes selling his plasma just to to try to get some money for the family. My mom, who was the first one in her family to graduate from college and get a master's degree, in addition to that, <laughs> came here and did some good work. And she was a cashier at Sedano's and sometimes to help make ends meet would um, you know, clean homes and honorable work and something that I could, my sister and I could really lean on to recognize that they were creating a path for our family and that I could lean on the power and the strength that they exemplified when all of a sudden they got that call and they answered that call to say, the highest vision for you, where you are meant to be in life, as foreign, literally foreign, as it may look and feel like, that is where you are heading. That is where you're being called to. And there's greatness, not only for you, but for your family and all those that you will touch as a result of you answering that call. And I imagine the fears and the discomfort that they had to live through and lived through for many years in order to force that new path, a path that not only I was blessed through, but that then allowed me to create my own path. 
and be able to live into my highest vision and my dreams. They didn't know what that journey would look like fully, right? Like they didn't know what it would take from them, yet they knew that they were called. And the calling was just too strong to be able to say no to. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you have had a calling that you've just wanted to shush away? You hear that still small voice that is inviting you into another path, another step in your own evolution, uh, another thing to live into and embody. And you're like, oh, not now. <laughs> that seems like a mountain too high to climb, right? But if you were here last Sunday and you were part of World Day of Prayer, we were talking about faith that moves mountains. And that faith is one of the other um, lessons that I was able to glean from my parents' experience of moving here because they had to have had some hope. They had to have had some faith that it would work out or that they would receive the resources and be able to live into the blessings to be able to make a new life for me and the rest of our family. And the question becomes, do we have to wait until that still small voice just gets too loud that we won't shush it? Or can we already be open to the path? Can we already be open to the next step on our journey without questioning it, without fearing it, without fighting it? And sometimes we just think, well, how am I going to get from point A to point Z, three, four, seven, five? And the reality is, is that with God and in God, we just have to trust the next step, right? And the Tao Te Ching says, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So what's that next single step in your own evolutionary and spiritual journey? What is the path that your faith is seeking for you to take and live into? And if we can take one step at a time, can you at least be open to recognizing that what's on the other side of each step is something great, is something powerful, is something that will continue to deepen you and anchor you and expand you? We can transcend our histories, right? We can move beyond them. We don't have to be limited by them. Uh, we do not have to be held captive to them. And I really invite us to recognize that we don't have to throw, them, throw it all away. That in our history, in our journeys, in our path, in our stories, in our heritage, there is something, a lesson for us to be inspired by. And so many times, like, we think we're like, I've just, I just got to get rid of everything that happened in the past and just move forward all new. Well, we can maybe transcend, right, uh, what didn't work for us, transcend into the next phase of our evolution. But we can also include that which did serve us, that which does inspire us. I was talking to somebody before the service, actually, you know, that we can be in fear of a lot of different things, or we can be inspired by those same things. It's just a way of looking at it in a different way and welcoming it in a different way. For me, for example, I was culturally uh, and uh, religiously raised Catholic, and I embrace my Catholic background. I love my Catholic background. I'm not, you know, I've, I've said it before, I'm not a recovering Catholic. Some people, when they come to Unity, they call themselves recovering Catholic, recovering Baptist, recovering Methodist, whatever it may be. You can label yourself whatever you want. So I'm not saying that you, you don't have to. I just have never done that because I'm really grateful for the foundation and the anchoring that it gave me. And I recognize that there was a new path in unity for me. And that's the, that's the power of it. Leaning on our history, leaning on our past, leaning on the ways in which we have lived into our faith and forging a new path ahead. We can transcend and we can include. And let me tell you, whether you recognize it or not, we all have powerful pathmakers within our heritage. Think about it. How many of you actually are uh, here in the United States uh, from a different country, born in a different country? How many of you are second generation Americans, third generation Americans, so forth, right? Like, so it's so much rich history that we can lean on and all of that uh, history there is power within it. There are survivors in that history and in that lineage. There are people that said yes to faith and no to fear within our lineage. There are people that have said yes to the possibilities rather than the limitations. And so we can really live into it and really be inspired by them. The stories are there if we are willing to seek them out and be inspired by them. We don't have to be tied to the past. We can be inspired by it. And so what is the path that you are on? 
What is the path that you're on? What is the next step? But what is the path? What is that highest vision that you have? And have you already told yourself that you're not good enough for it? That you have to think a little smaller? That you have to dream a little smaller? That who am I to uproot everything about my life and move it into a new direction? How many of you have recreated your life? How many of you have recreated your life more times than you can even count? We've done it. And there's an opportunity to do it. So just like we've recreated our lives in the past, when a fear comes up, when a challenge comes up, when things seem like it's getting the best of us, why can't we just take a moment to say, wait a minute, I'm going to recreate how I see myself. I'm going to recreate how I am living into this space. I am leaning on the history and the heritage and the power of the ancestors and their stories and what they've given me and what's within me, and I can forge ahead. Now, I recently heard a story... Uh, it was a little video, and it talked about trees. Exciting. It talked about trees, but one of the beautiful things, and of course, I'm like, oh, of course. But it was talking about how trees, in order to survive and thrive, they actually have to grow two ways. Yes, they have to grow towards the sunlight, but they also have to grow and anchor themselves into the soil. And it, doesn't, it happens all at the same time. Right? It's moving outwardly like us. How are we meant to expand? How are we meant to evolve? How are we meant to continue on our path? And in that, how are we anchoring ourselves to go deeper into our truth, go deeper into God, go deeper into the potential that is within us so that both nourish us? There's nourishment in the growing and the expansion and living out who we are, and there is nourishment in being anchored in the truth of our being. And so the question becomes, can we do both? As we're thinking about our path, as we're thinking about what the next step is, can we take a moment to root ourselves, to really stand firm so that we can then expand towards the light, towards the sunlight? And there is resistance. Now, interesting enough, there's no resistance once the seed and the seedling I'm like, uh, comes out of the earth, right? Like it just starts growing upwardly. But the resistance takes place in, in the soil because that seed has to kind of break open and the seedling has to push through the soil and it has to continue to push through the ground to continue to grow and anchor its roots. And I was thinking about how true that is for our own spiritual journey because we may think or I may think that the resistance is the challenges and the difficulty and the people and the people and the people that are outside of me. But the resistance is all internal. The resistance is all internal, right? Like you can go through the same experiences with resistance or without resistance, with a perception that it is for our highest good or that it's going to get the best of us, with fear or with faith. And which one is the one that we're going to choose? Which one is the one that we're going to trust? And what are we doing in order to be more trusting of it? To trust God. See, uh, Deepak Chopra says, when life is happening all around us, he says, in the midst of the movement and the chaos, keep stillness inside of you. As we're moving through the path, how are we going to that place of stillness? How are we seeking that still small voice in prayer and meditation? And how are we looking to continue to expand the way that we trust God? And let me tell you, with all our heart, with all our mind, like the the song goes, but I'm going to tell you, it's not a blind faith. And I was thinking about this. It's a bridging faith. It's a bridging. It's not a blind faith. It's a bridging faith. A faith that gets us from point A to trust that we can get to point B. A bridging faith that says, oh, there's this fear in me and I want to do it to be able to create it, manifest it, and live into it. It's a bridging faith that moves us from the place of I don't know where I'm supposed to go to guess what? I'm already on the path there. And so how can we lean more on that bridging faith? It's to follow and to trust the Christ and the power that is within us. Martha Smock, unity minister, you know, says um, uh, to follow the Christ is to follow the divine leadings from within. The promptings of spirit that come to us when we pray. So when the tough gets tough or when the path gets a little murky or when the journey seems like it's taking a whole lot of time, are we living into that space or are we rooting ourselves and anchoring ourselves in that bridging faith. You know, we can walk our path with Christ. You can invite Jesus along too, but more than anything, I'm talking about that Christ essence that we are. And how are we allowing that to be what honors our roots, 
How are we allowing that to be what embraces and allows us to embrace our divine freedom? And how are we stepping into that beautiful future that is also being pushed and pulled by a higher vision? How many of us are in certain areas of our lives a little lost about what's the vision? What's the vision here? Where am I heading here? What's at hand here? Well, we don't have to know the whole story. We don't have to know what point C, D, and E are. We can be willing to just listen to what the next step is. And in that, trust the very presence of God to be what guides us. So in these moments of questioning, in these moments of challenge, or in these moments of simply just not knowing where you are heading, prayer, meditation, and oneness. That's the tool. That's the resource. And in that bridging faith, we are reminded from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, for surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Think about that. It's already been promised to us. It's just us being able to step into that path with a willingness and with a faith. We can call forth the guidance from the ancestors. Think about the heritage that is within you, not just culturally, but spiritually, the power that is within you, the generations in unity that have come to expand the way that we see the world and live into the world and lean on that. You are part of the spiritual journey. You are part of the spiritual evolution. You are a part of bringing heaven on earth in greater ways, and you're not doing it alone. You're doing it with all those individuals that have ever had the thought, there's a better way. There's a better tomorrow. There's a way that I can show up and not only make the path clear for myself, but make the path clearer for others. We can call forth the guidance from the ancestors. We can anchor ourselves in God. We can anchor ourselves in truth and in faith and we can forge ahead a new path the new path is already calling us it is only time for us to say yes to that path and allow that path to be what guides us and leads us as god itself together we walk towards greater peace together we walk towards greater harmony and unity together we walk in faith and let me tell you together we walk towards heaven on earth and the beautiful thing is as ram das has reminded us in the past all we're doing is walking each other home. Guess what, people? We know the way to go home. It is within, it is in God, and it is with a bridging faith. Namaste. Woo!